All right, guys, so today we're going to work more with function notation, um, but what you're going to do today is um, either you can print this worksheet and you are going to complete the question numbers that I have here in red, or you can just do this on a piece of notebook paper and just answer these questions. So you're going to notice this piece of paper is uh, or that you're going to that you're going to answer. I'm going to go over um, a question or two from each section just so that you understand what to do but you are to submit to me 16 questions and you're going to do that in google classroom so whether you print this and take a picture and send it to me that way you want to scan it you can do that or if you just want to write down questions or numbers 1 through 16 on a piece of notebook paper or something and do it that way you can do it that way whatever works for you but i need to see your answers to these 16 questions okay that way i can give you some credit for it all right so so looking at this the very top part um, it says function notation is an easy way or a way to easily communicate to a reader that the relation is a function, hence the name function notation. It makes it easy to see which variable is the input variable and the output variable. So, for example, in this first one right here, when it says f of 3 is negative 1, so I'm looking at this right here. When it says f of 3 is negative 1, rather than just telling you y equals negative 1, it's telling you that when x is 3, y is equal to negative 1. So it's being very specific about the information it gives you. Well, remember, when you graph points, when you have a graph, this is a function. And all these little points on here, these are all solutions to the function. So that's what you're doing here when you have function notation is you're basically showing the different solutions or the different points that are a part of the function. So when we have f of 3 equals negative 1, this is the point 3 comma negative 1, meaning when x is 3, y is negative 1. Okay, g of 2 equals 10 is 2 comma 10. Okay. Um, so that's how you do that first section. Now, the second section right here is specific with graphs. And so when it says f of 1 equals, this means when x equals 1, y is equal to what? So if you look, when x is 1, here is where x is 1. Well, I go up and I look at the graph and I see that the answer is 3. So when x is 1, y is 3. I'm going to do that same thing with 5. This, again, means when x is 5. So I look here. Here is where x is 5. Well, this means that the function is equal to 0. All right, now I'm going to come down here and look at this one. Now, this one says f of x equals 7. This means that y equals 7, and so x equals blank. When it says f of x equals 7, it's saying that the function is equal to 7. Well, here's my y-axis. Here is where y is 7. So if y is 7, I come down here, and I see that x is 3. Okay, so that was a little bit backwards kind of from what you're thinking about. Uh, looking at the table, when f of 0 or f of 0 equals blank, this means when x equals 0. Well, when x equals 0, the function is equal to 6. y is equal to 6. Now I'm looking at this one here. This one, this one is backwards. It's saying that the function is equal to negative 10, meaning y equals negative 10. Well, when y is negative 10, x is equal to 4. Okay. All right, down here, the next part of the sheet that you are looking at, now I want to be very specific and show you that notice that you are looking at different, there's different function here. So like this one is F, so I'm going to use this function here. Um, this one says G, so I'm going to use this function here. Um, so you have to, that's another advantage of function notation as it's kind of a way of naming the graph. So if you've got a lot of them going on, then they each have different letter names. So that's useful. Um, here, so when it says f of 3 equals blank, so we're going to use this function here. So we're going to say f of 3 equals negative 2 times 3 plus 5. So f of 3 is negative 6 plus 5. So f of 3 is negative 1, and you're going to leave it that way. You're going to leave it so that it says negative 1. Like you want to say f of 3 equals negative 1 because that's being very specific. 
Now on number, or this next one that I'm doing here, it says g of x is 12. So I'm going to use this function here. So g of x equals 12, that means that the function is equal to 12, not x. The function is equal to 12. So I'm going to say 12 equals 3x plus 9. I subtract 9 from both sides. I get 3 equals 3x divide by 3 and I get that 1 equals x. So this means g of 1 equals 12. When x is 1, the function is equal to 12, which makes sense. If you go back and plug in 1 right here, you should see that it's 12. So g of 1 equals 12. And is two pages. There's 16 different questions. All right, and then here on the back, um, these are just some word problems, just a little bit of interpreting. So it says a cab costs $2 per mile, which can be written C of M. So the cost per mile, C of M, M is the miles, is equal to 2M, where C stands for the cost and M stands for the miles. Interpret C of 5 equals 10. This means if you go, if you drive or ride 5 miles, the cost is $10. That's what that means. That if you're going to go five miles, the cost is $10. So again, you're going to go through, you're going to do the 16 problems that I did not do that are in red. You figure out how the best way to submit it to me. If you have questions, let me know. I am here to help you by email through Remind. Again, there's a live session at 12 every day for you guys. So you're more than welcome to come on that. Okay.